Hi guys, welcome to the 5.5 difference of squares and square roots video. All right, so in this video, we're going to learn how to use what's called difference of squares to be able to solve a, an equation. <clears throat> so you can only use difference of squares when you actually have to have a difference. So difference when we're talking about adding or subtracting would mean subtracting. So they must be a subtraction sign and you can also take the square root of whatever is being subtracted. So if you can't do those two things, then you're not gonna to wanna to use the difference of squares method. So number two, use the following rule to factor a squared minus b squared. So what you do is you just set up two parentheses, and because they're both divisible, you can take the square root of both of them, and there's a subtraction sign in between, all we're going to do is put a plus sign and a minus sign in each of the parentheses, and you're gonna have a plus b in one of them and a minus b in the other. And you can check your work by distributing. So if we did a times a, that would be a squared. And we had a times negative b would be negative ab. Then you have b times a, which is positive ab. And then you have b times negative b, which is negative b squared. And then these two would cancel out because negative b plus ab is zero, and you would be left with a squared minus b squared. So that's why you're able to do that in that quick method because you have a minus sign and they're both um, a, you can do, take the square root of them. All right, so it's important to know that if you have a negative number underneath the radical, so when you're taking the square root of something and it's a negative, that would be an imaginary number. And imaginary numbers, you're not gonna have to deal with in Algebra 1. So just know that if you have a negative underneath the radical, you can't do it in Algebra 1. You're gonna be learning about that in Algebra 2, so you don't have to worry about that right now. But just to know that if it is a negative underneath, then you're gonna say there's no answer because you can't do that. All right, so the square root method, the first thing to do, um, if you have a x squared or um, an x squared that's on itself or a y squared that's on one side by itself, all you have to do is take the square root of both sides and you would get your answer. So you have a positive and a negative answer for square roots because if you take the square root of something, you could also be a negative answer. So for example, if you had 64, for example, you could actually do negative eight times negative eight would give you 64, and eight times eight could give you 64. So you have to put in your answer plus minus that answer. So let me show you what that looks like. So if you had the square root of 64, we all know that to be eight, but like I said, it could also be negative eight. So when you're writing your answer, you need to write it like this. So plus minus eight. So we use square root method if you're looking for solutions and use difference of squares when you're looking for factors. So difference of squares is this method up here when you're looking for factors that are the answer. And if you're doing the square root method, you're just looking for the solution, which is just an answer like plus minus eight, like we have here. All right, so let's show some examples. So when you first start, you're gonna to check to see if you can take the square root of both of them. And if you can, then you are one step away from using the difference of squares. And then also you're going to see <clears throat> if the second number or the number that we have is four is also a perfect square, which we know that it is. So we can use the difference of square method. So first you're gonna set up your parentheses with the plus and minus in between. And then you're gonna take the square root of both of those things in the problem. So the square root of x squared would just be x, and the square root of four would just be two. So we put x and two in both of the sides, and you're done with your answer. So if you were actually trying to find the root, then we would set those each to equal to zero and solve for x. But we're not doing that in this um, setup. So we're just factoring, we're not finding the solution. So that's why we can use difference of squares. All right, and same thing for number two. So we're looking to see if they both are perfect squares, and they are, and they are both being subtracting, so we can do the difference of squares method. So we're gonna use our parentheses and put our plus and minus in. Take the square root of 81, and we know that to be nine. Take the square root of x squared, and we know that to be x. So remember what I said in the previous slide about plus and minus when you take the square root? So that's why plus and minus is right here. So the positive x and the negative x. And that's why when we're taking the square root of x squared, you get the positive x and the negative x. All right, so for number three, 
we have just a little bit of a different issue with we have a coefficient in front of that b squared. So it's the same thing, 9 is a perfect square, and so is b squared, and then 100 is also a perfect square. And they're both subtracting each other, so we can do the difference of square method. So we're going to set up our parentheses, put plus and minus in between, and then we take the square root of 9b squared, which 9 would be 3, and b squared would be b, so 3b, and put that here. And then 100, the square root of 100 would just be 10. And you're done. And then same thing for number four, set up your parentheses, and then check to make sure that both of them are perfect squares and both of them are being subtracting. So we have a subtraction sign, 25 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, and so is 49. So if we take the square root of 25x squared, that would be 5x. And if we take the square root of 49, that would be 7. So if you wanted to check to see if you have the right answer, we can just do the distribution method where you multiply 5x times 5x, and 5x times negative 7, then 7 times 5x, and 7 times negative 7. So that would give you the 25x squared again, and then minus 35x. I want you to notice something. Every single time we do the middle two terms, they cancel each other out, and that's why you can use the difference of squares. Because they're canceling each other out right here, you're only left with these two terms in the end, and that's why every single time you do difference of squares, you can cancel out that middle term. All right, so for this next one, we do not have perfect squares. So I'm gonna show you what to do if there's not a perfect square. However, you do have a minus sign, so that should give you a clue that you possibly could do difference of squares. You just have to manipulate the problem a little bit. So we do have a GCF between two and 72, and that would be two. So if you pull out that two, you're left with x squared minus 36. Now look at the problem. x squared and uh, minus 36, those two are perfect squares. So if we set up our problem, but this time we just have a two in the front, because that came from here, then you can take the square root of x squared and the square root of 36. So we're gonna put our plus sign minus sign there. Square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 36 is six. Oops. Did I run out of ink? <laughs> there we go. All right, so then that would be your answer. So when you have a GCF, you just have to take it out first, and then you can do the difference of squares. All right, so number six, same thing. Um, I know that if we take out a, a divide both sides by two, that would turn that front number into a nine X squared. And the last term would be a minus 25, and nine and 25 are both perfect squares. So I'm gonna take that GCF out of a two leaving me with 9x squared minus 25, and then take the square root of both sides. So I'm gonna set up <clears throat> my parentheses, put our plus and minus sign here, drop down the two from our GCF. Square root of 9x squared is 3x, and the square root of 25 is five, and you have your answer. And you can check your work to see if you're done. So 3x times 3x is your 9x squared, 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. 5 times 3x is positive 15x, so those will cancel out. And 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. So then you're left with 9x squared minus 25. And if we bring down that, 20, that 2 from originally that was there when we pulled it out, if you distribute that 2 back into that binomial, 2 times 9x squared would give you your 18x squared. And 2 times negative 25 would give you your negative 50. So we know we have the right answer. All right, so for this one, we're actually going to um, do the square root method that we talked about on the first slide. So first thing you have to do is get x squared by itself. And the reason why we're doing the square root method and not the difference of squares is because of that plus sign. So first thing we have to do is get x squared by itself. So we're gonna subtract three on both sides and then divide by two. And now we have x squared by itself and a perfect square on the other side. So if we take the square root of both sides, you're left with x equals. And remember, we want plus minus the answer. And that would be your answer. And then number eight, it's a little bit easier. You don't have to really do anything other than just 
square root on both sides because x squared is already by itself. So you're left with x equals, and you're going to do plus minus 9 because the square root of 81 is 9. So on this side, you're going to subtract 4 first. And then you're going to want to divide by 3. So put in your calculator 432 divided by 3, and that's going to equal 144. So now you can do your square root method, where you just put square roots over the top of it, and you're left with x equals plus or minus 12. All right, so now we have a little bit something different on this number 10. We have a minus sign, so that should give you the clue that you could possibly use the difference of squares. So we also have a 7 in front, and we know that that's not a perfect square. So I'm wondering if 7 could possibly be our GCF. And so I put in my calculator 567 divided by 7, and I get 81. So that is what we're going to pull out. So you're going to pull out that 7 as your GCF, which leaves you with x squared. And 561, 567 divided by 7 is 81. And so now you can do your... Um, difference of square method. So we're going to put our square roots over the top, put our parentheses down, plus and minus sign here, bring down the 7 that we already found as the GCF, and the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 81 is 9. So that goes on either side of our answer. Now it did say in the question that we need to find the roots, zeros, and solution. So we can't stop here with this problem because we're not just factoring. So if it just said to factor, then we would stop but it's asking us to find the solution. So these are actually called the roots because you're actually solving both of them for zero. So we need to set the first one to be x plus nine equals zero. So then you would subtract nine and you get x equals negative nine. So that's your first answer. Set the second one equal to zero and you would add nine to get x by itself and that's your second answer. So your answers would actually be x equals plus or minus nine and then also, if you set the 7 equal to 0, you could also have 0 as an answer. So x could also be 0 or plus or minus 9. Actually, I take that back, because if you think about it, 7 cannot equal 0. So it would just be your x plus or minus 9. If that um, GCF had a variable in it, then you would set that whole thing equal to zero. So if you think about it, seven cannot equal zero, so that's not a root. But if it had like seven x, then you could set seven x equal to zero and solve for x. All right, so the answer to number 10 would be plus or minus nine. And that's the end of the video. Go Seahawks. Woo!